for human survival, we evolved to be able to survive on all sorts of suboptimal foods. And it just makes me mad when marketing companies try to tell you that a survival peasant food like oatmeal that's full of phytic acid that steals your minerals, that that's somehow good for you. The tricky thing about phytic acid, the way I, the reason I wrote about it in Smarter Not Harder, is that you will feel lectins if you're sensitive. <laughs> you will feel histamine. These are immediate feedback. But with phytic acid, you get the feedback when you break your hip. <laughs> like you, you won't see the bone density. And you and I have both talked uh, on social about bone density in vegans. And you can see the effects of phytic acid because the, the inner parts of their bones are like spongy. And I just had bone surgery um, last year and I was awake for it on my foot. They were, were cutting through the main bone in my foot because of an old yoga injury and a genetic, I have square joints. Um, so uh, anyhow, they needed to rebuild the joint in my, my right big toe. So when he was cutting, the, the saw goes, and, and the surgeon looks over at the nurse and goes, what is going on? I'm having a hard time getting through the bone. Is this guy even human? I'm like, no, I, I don't eat phytic acid in meaningful amounts. And for listeners, like phytic acid, it's a problem. And when a doctor tells you it's not a problem, it's so ill-informed because what you do to learn about things like mycotoxins, things like endocrine disruptors, things like phytic acid is you go to the farmers, the ranchers. And I mean, I, I've run a, a small farm with cows and pigs and sheep uh, for several years in Canada. And what farmers do is they measure the amount of phytic acid in food. And they're feeding this to animals with three stomachs who actually can make phytase, which breaks down phytic acid. Humans don't make phytase in any meaningful amounts. Even if we eat tons of it, we make a tiny, tiny bit. So they still overload cows with it to the point they're adding enzymes into the food so the cows can handle even more of these phytic acid-rich foods than they're supposed to. Plants make phytic acid to steal our minerals, so we won't eat the plants. And if we do, we'll get weak, we won't reproduce, and then the plants can win. So, or at least we'll stop people, eating them. <laughs> you're, you're eating oatmeal and you think it's good for you. It's, it's peasant food to keep you from starving to death until you can kill something and eat it. That's what it's for. And it's for the ruling class to feed the peasants because it doesn't matter if they die as long as they have lots of kids. Like, that's oatmeal and oat milk? Good God. So, um, I just wanted people to understand you're weak right now. You don't get results from your exercise, you don't get results from your meditation if you don't have minerals to make enzymes that allow your body to do its job. And that creates stress, which is why vegans are universally angry. They are, Dave. They are. They're just cranky people. And I was I a vegan. Them. Okay, guys. I, I actually love vegans because in terms of wanting to reduce animal suffering, I'm with you. In terms of wanting to fix the environment, I'm with you. And in terms of wanting to be healthy, I'm with you. It's just that the vegan diet doesn't do any of those things. We, we exactly. were deceived. Exactly. The vegan diet ends up with people being nutrient deficient, creating more carbon in the environment through monocrop agriculture and more pesticides and more loss of life because of bykills. And then people are just not that great to each other and more life forms suffer. So it's, it's kind of a, it's just a great irony. It, it turns out in the world, when you're looking at complex behavior emerging from distributed systems, there is a very nefarious, it's called equilibrium. And, and if you're optimizing a system for a certain outcome, telling people to do something to solve a problem that creates the problem is the way to make the most money. And this is diet soda. Like, oh, guys, yeah, you're fat. Drink diet soda. It'll help you get thin. And it just keeps you fat. So you just drink diet soda for the rest of your life. If diet soda worked after six weeks, you drank it and you lost all your weight and then you went back to regular soda, it would be a failed product. And so the vegan diet is one of those things. You know, the problem is you're just not vegan enough because you felt good at first when you did it, right? So just have some more kale. And like you'll do it for the rest of your life. Kale on a per calorie basis is five times more expensive than grass-fed Wagyu tenderloin. It's dumb. Yeah, and ultimately, and if you could make that calculation based on nutrients, I wish someone could do, this would be interesting. It's probably already been done. Some sort of a calculator with an adjustment factor for actual nutrient bioavailability in- Oh, Yeah most vegan foods versus animal foods it would be, you would see how expensive a vegan diet is. Like what's your, you know, what a hundred milligrams of bioavailable magnesium costs you on a vegan diet versus on a, an animal 
rich animal-based diet, there's no comparison because of the bioavailability. And of course, magnesium is a divalent cation, meaning it has a plus two positive charge and is also one of these minerals that gets bound up, chelated, bit into by phytic acid and pulled out right. of the body. So it's all wrapped into this conversation. I Here's an analogy that, that might be helpful. So I've been working, um, as I've been talking about Smarter Not Harder and just you know, helping to, to socialize the books so people understand what they get when they read it. Nutrient availability is an abstract concept, but heroin availability isn't. We've all seen the movies where someone swallows condoms full of heroin to smuggle them through the border. Now, they ate two pounds of heroin, which should kill you, but magically it wasn't bioavailable, so it didn't kill them. Okay. When you eat plants, they basically have condoms wrapped around their minerals. You will not get those minerals. And, and sometimes the plants are full of condoms that can wrap around other minerals in the there other you foods you're eating. So if you're eating a steak with something that's high in phytic acid, the, the minerals in that steak might get bound up by the phytic acid in the plant foods. Even so, if you take a mineral, like a zinc supplement yeah. with phytic acid, you know, a handful of almonds with your zinc is probably a dumb idea. <laughs> So this is the this is the this is the reality um, for the listeners is that if you are eating phytic acid rich foods, you are swallowing condoms. I want people to remember that. So stop swallowing <laughs> condoms. <laughs> Nobody I, wants I hadn't to gone that far, condom. but okay, all right. Stop putting condoms in your mouth, guys. It's a horrible idea. Don't swallow them. <laughs> right? Stop doing this. It's so you like it raw? Your, yeah, it's binding up minerals. It's a horrible <laughs> idea. Nobody's like it's just they're horrible. Condoms are horrible things to swallow. Don't do it. They're petroleum products. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the, the metaphor is getting a little bit long here, but you get the idea. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's the, that's the problem. And, and I like what you said there, that you, don't, you, don't, you might feel lectins, you might feel mm. isothiocyanates from kale blocking the absorption of iodine leading to thyroid issues, but you're not going to feel phytic acid until your hip joint breaks or your shin breaks. When I was in college, I lived on uh, basically like noodles and oatmeal and I thought I was doing a great thing. And actually, I would put milk in my oatmeal. So I had calcium in the oatmeal. And I had so many stress fractures at that time in my life. I was running a lot. Yes. Snake number two was that I was doing chronic cardio, um, which we can get into. But I was running a ton. And I had horrible stress fractures. This really, really stressed me out in college because I was addicted to running and the endorphins. It feels good. But my body could not handle the stress of long distance running or even moderate distance running. And I had stress fractures in my, I think I stress fractured my, the first bone I stress fractured was my femur, which is a big bone to stress fracture. And then I stress fractured my fibula. And then I think I had a tibial stress fracture. Oh my over, God. Over, it was probably over the span of three or four years, but I persisted in my oatmeal love affair. And in my N of one anecdote, that was associated with multiple stress fractures that resolved almost immediately when I cut grains out of my diet and I was able to up my mileage and, and do more chronic cardio, which wasn't great for other reasons, but yeah. Anyway, 